Hi, my name is Michael Chief, Product Manager at Matrox Imaging located in Montreal, Canada. Uh, we are here today at the Matrox booth at Vision 2010. Me and my colleague will show you uh, the demos that we have at our show. First, uh, we have the Matrox SuperSight, our high performance computing platform. Uh, we have on demo what we have here is a printing inspection done on the SuperSight. So now you take a look at the high density that we have in, inside the machine. We have three system host boards here. What system host boards are essentially individual PCs. Each of these are running dual quad core Xeons from Intel. At the same time, you can also fit GPUs from AMD or NVIDIA. We're compatible with both. And finally, we have a frame grabber, which is a matrix radiant inside the system, all connected to the PCI Express 2.0 backplane. Now, in terms of uh, processing, we do this in clusters. In this machine, we're using two clusters, one with each a system host board and a GPU for each cluster. In terms of processing that we're doing on it is we're using our matrix radiant to grab, uh, do a simulation of a grab inside each of these host boards. This grab is doing at 120 frames a second, each with uh, 2K by 2K images. So essentially, we are grabbing uh, at around 1.5 gigabytes per second of data, round robin into each system host boards. From there on, we're doing image processing, uh, a printing inspection. So essentially, we're matching a template into live images and finding defects into it. The first part of this inspection is done through the system host board. From then on, we transfer the image into the GPUs. And then inside the GPUs, we do finer detail inspections, find the defects, push the image back to the host port to do the blob analysis at the end to find the defects. And what's really interesting about the Matrox SuperSight is the interconnect uh, connectivity between each of these devices. So uh, again, they're going through a PCI Express 2.0 backplane that could generate theoretically 8 gigabytes per second of data transfer between each device systems. Now I'd like to show you our second demo here available at the Vision 2010, where it's the hardware here is the Matrox Orion HD, a uh, HD SD uh, capable graphics adapter and grabber board uh, that we have on display here. Now this card is capable of accepting DVI, SDI, or even the HDMI or VGA uh, adapter in display or input. Acceptable formats for the input and output are up to 1080p, 60 frames per second. At the demo here today, we have two different cameras, a full HD 1080p 60 and a 720p 60 camera grabbing at the same time into the Orion HD and at the same time displaying onto two different displays. So that's one of the capabilities of the Orion HD, dual input and dual output capability. And along with that, we added effects to the image, which is also done by the hardware of the Orion HD. Here we have the Matrox Imaging logo and a picture-in-picture -picture format, which is essentially display from this camera into here. At the same time, there's alpha blending, meaning it's blended into the image, so you can see the background of it, if you take a look. Finally, the last effect we added with the hardware of the Matrox Orion HD is MIM warping. So we're allowed to do all this with zero, almost zero CPU usage on the Matrox Orion HD. Well, thanks, Michael. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Borriero. I'm the product line manager at Matrox Imaging. And uh, I'd like to show you a few more uh, demos that we have here at the uh, Matrox Imaging uh, Vision 2010 stand. Uh, let me begin by uh, showing you uh, a demo that we put together uh, uh, hardware-wise based on our Gator Eye um, Gigi Vision camera. Uh, we're, we're using the color model here. Uh, it's uh, connected to a Matrox uh, Foresight X industrial uh, computer that's embedded in the uh, demo station. Uh, what the demo was put together using our Matrox imaging library, um, using the, the latest update, uh, which is called Processing Pack 2. Uh, what this demo is uh, showing is the ability to do uh, histogram-based uh, color matching. So the demo works by uh, first locating a fiducial using our pattern matching module, then using our new fixturing capability, uh, placing four regions where we will 
uh, perform the color matching. Uh, now, what's interesting about histogram-based color matching is, is that it's uh, good for multicolored regions. So what we're doing here is uh, inspecting for the uh, distribution of uh, candy. So we have an expected uh, mix order. And what we've done, some of the sample sites, we've uh, mixed the order or we replicated some uh, samples. So we're able to detect the wrong mix of color. So another demo that we have here at the uh, Matrox Imaging Booth at Vision 2010 features the, our Matrox Iris GT smart camera uh, running the uh, design assistant software. Uh, specifically, design assistant, uh, the design assistant uh, software is an interactive development environment whereby uh, you develop your application by designing a flowchart, as you can see over here, as opposed to writing a traditional program code. In addition to uh, designing the application logic, uh, you also are able to uh, design the operator interface uh, that will run on the camera uh, within the same environment. Um, so here, moving on to the actual running uh, demo, uh, we're doing, uh, we're showing uh, ampule inspection and specifically uh, all the tools that can be deployed onto the Iris GT uh, smart camera. Uh, here we're detecting for uh, fill level, uh, the alignment of the nozzle, is it straight or is it crooked? And we're also looking for the presence of the cap and uh, if the cap is uh, inserted correctly. Uh, here what you see here is uh, the um, screen is uh, interfaced directly to the Iris GT camera so theoretically you don't need to have a PC to view the operator interface from the Iris GT. Uh, it's actually a touch panel so I can actually interact with the interface directly. Uh, resume inspection for example. Uh, one of the interesting features of the Matrox Iris GT is that you can have multiple uh, connections uh, to the camera for the operator view. So you have one here and if we move uh, here you see you also have uh, remote connections uh, to the camera. So you get to see the same operator view as it's running uh, locally on the camera remotely. So I can see it here through a, a web-based interface. So it's the same web pages that are, uh, you saw just before or you can access it uh, from a uh, .NET based application. So here you see the, uh, the interface to the, uh, the camera's uh, operator uh, view, uh, from, not from a web page, but actually from a .NET application. So you have many options uh, for publishing an operator interface with the Iris GT uh, smart camera. So the, the last thing we'd like to uh, show you uh, here at our uh, booth on, uh, at the Vision 2010 show is a preview of uh, some technology that we're uh, working on. Uh, it's actually uh, an enhancement to something that uh, we already have available. Uh, it involves uh, positioning uh, object, uh, objects in 3D space uh, using a single camera. So here we've uh, calibrated the system. We're not showing this here now. But uh, what we can do is with just uh, four fiducials, uh, we're able to uh, position an object in 3D space. In this case, it's a model car. And as you can see from the, we're following the wireframe of the model car. So we just need to uh, locate four of the multiple fiducials here in the camera's field of view in order to uh, uh, position the object in uh, 3D space.